Welcome to Nevada Week. I'm Amber Renee Dixon. In March of 2021, Congress passed a massive coronavirus relief package known as the American Rescue Plan Act. It doled out $350 billion to states, local governments, and school districts. Of the $6.7 billion Nevada got, some of it was already earmarked for specific purposes. The state itself ended up with $2.7 billion for its general fund, while local counties and cities received more than $1 billion. At his State of the State address in February, Nevada Democratic Governor Steve Sisolak designated 500 million American Rescue Plan Act dollars to the Home Means Nevada initiative. The initiative launched in April and aims to address the lack of affordable housing in Nevada with 300 million for the development of multifamily units, 130 million to preserve existing affordable housing units, 40 million to acquire land on which to construct affordable housing, and 30 million to increase home ownership. And joining us now to talk about the need for this initiative, concerns surrounding how effective it will be, and other uses of state ARPA funds thus far, is Nevada Current reporter Michael Lyle. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. A recent article of yours painted a dire picture for what the average worker in Nevada is able to afford for housing. What did you learn through that reporting? Thank you so much for having me. So UNLV released a study over the summer that looked at workers in Nevada and they found in Southern Nevada, seven out of 10 of the top occupations in the Northern Nevada, six out of 10 of the top occupations could not afford uh, to, er, to afford the housing that they they uh, needed to, li to live and to survive. So they could not afford on their own, on their own incomes, even a studio bedroom. I think only two out of the top occupations here in Southern Nevada could actually afford the rent for a rising cost of a studio apartment. That is shocking. It is shocking and dire. Just paints a picture of just the things and the occupations making our state and economy run. The workers that are filling those jobs can't afford to live. Many of them are in retail, as your article noted. Uh, the $500 million Home Means Nevada initiative. When we had State Treasurer Zach Conine on last month to talk about this, he said that that $500 million could result in about 2,500 affordable multifamily housing units being built. I want to hear your thoughts on that, but first let's listen to his soundbite. 2,500 doesn't seem like enough. It's not it's not nearly enough. Not we nearly know the enough. hole in housing in the in the state of Nevada is about 105,000 uh, units, right? That's the hole of an affordable housing. The 80% um, of that give or take is affordable housing, right? So it's 105 total and then a little bit more than 80 that's affordable. Every bit helps, right? Every house matters an exceptional amount for the family that can be in there and we keep looking for ways that we can expand it. Your thoughts on that number, 2,500. Yeah, it is a drop in the bucket. So we went into the pandemic in a housing crisis where there was about 100,000 deficit in affordable housing units. What that means is people are paying more than 30% of their income. Or, or, to be considered housing secure, you're paying less than 30% of your income towards housing and utilities. This means that people are paying way more, probably up into 50% of their income towards housing needs, meaning it's draining other parts of what they need, whether it's food, whether it's prescriptions. So it's cutting into that. Uh, so this money is unprecedented and amazing, but it's only gonna, it's only a drop in the bucket to what the need is. And of that 100,000 units that we lack, the most severe is for people making less than 30% of area median income or those that are homeless that are com coming off the streets and have no income. The Interim Finance Committee is in charge of approving who gets these uh, ARPA dollars. It is made up of state legislatures and legislators and in April, they voted to approve 250 million, the first half of that 500 million, to go to the Nevada Housing Division to begin work. But some of them were hesitant to give the yes. What was behind their hesitation? It's all about oversight. I mean, you have a, a, a government committee out of the governor's office, so the Housing Division 
has a seven person committee and they're going to be reviewing these funds to where what projects they're going to be financing. And so a part of it was concerns from both Democrats and Republicans about the oversight of how these projects are going to be picked and how these dollars are going to be allocated. Uh, but one of the senators that voted in, in favor of it, who was raising these concerns, also mentioned, well, that's what we're here for, to provide some uh, government oversight to you. And so it was even though three Republicans voted against it, it was did receive bipartisan support. But the biggest concern was a lot of the oversight behind this. Uh, saying, how are we going to make sure that this actually works out? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, what has the Nevada Housing Division been able to accomplish since April? Yeah, so they had a pre-application process that they were seeking applications for four categories, the for, uh, development of multifamily housing, of land acquisition dollars, of home ownership, and for housing preservation. And so they did a pre-application process and looked at about 234 applications. And of that, they whittled it down to 180 applications within four of those uh, categories. And so they're still reviewing the process and they expect it to uh, have their final review by the end of August and start disseminating some of these funds in September. And that would be for developers to actually begin these projects. Yeah, to hit the ground running, but it's gonna take some time before we actually see any of these uh, projects uh, be built and come off the ground and units available for people to live in. To actually occupy, how long till we might see these homes? It might take a year or two, to be honest. Um, it, I mean, housing development is a very complicated process in general, and so, but we have seen, uh, just because of the pandemic and what coming out of the pandemic, I mean, we're still in a pandemic, but just because of the nuances of the pandemic, it's just, it's taking some time to, to see these projects uh, come off the ground. And so it's going to it's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> Did any of the state lawmakers talk about that? I mean, lack of uh, construction supplies, how long it's taking because of supply chain issues and, and price of construction materials. So that actually has not come up right now. I have not heard anything of that come up in the interim finance committee, but I'm sure that's going to come up as they start approving these projects to get a realistic expectation and overview of once they identify the project of when we're going to see uh, them, them actually start being constructed. Okay, talking about the timeline, bear with me here for these ARPA funds. October 2021 was when the state began accepting grant proposals uh, for these funds. 2.7 billion is what the state got. $30 million was set aside as part of the Community Recovery Grant Program, and that was to benefit nonprofits. On Tuesday, the rest of that money was doled out, so it is all now accounted for. Uh, but from October until Tuesday, that's about nine months, and there were nonprofits saying, what is taking so long? Had you heard any of that, and how were lawmakers responding? I have not heard from nonprofits why it's taking so long, but I will say the state did see a sizable portion of applications. I mean, the need is great. The need for nonprofits, whether it's housing services, whether it's food services, whether it's childcare, the need has been so overwhelming even before the pandemic and just exacerbated by the pandemic. And so they received a lot of applications. So I can see why it took some time to sort through everything before we actually saw any action. And when I, I can imagine how frustrating it is for nonprofits to have to wait, um, but it, it is a process. Yeah, uh, as you have reported, the state has designated in the past six months 50 million for the Nevada Child Care Fund, 75 million for universal free school meals in public schools, and 500 million to invest in broadband infrastructure. Now, with the 30 million accounted for with that community program for the nonprofits, uh, the state says there is about $1.1 billion left of that $2.7 billion. It was the governor who asked for that $30 million to be set aside. Uh, of course, it was up to the Interim Finance Committee to okay that. How much pull does the governor have in these decisions of how ARPA funds are being spent? I'm sure there is some coordination between the governor's office and the legislative committees about the ARPA dollars, um, which is going to play an interesting question going into the 2022 election uh, because there's still going to be some there's things that the governor is going to need to do, and so it could vary drastically depending if uh, Governor Sisolak is reelected or Sheriff Joe Lombardo, the Republican uh, income, Republican sheriff that's challenging him, gets uh, and elected into the office to see what direction they're going to take the state and use these funds and what what his priorities for this funds are.
do you think, what do you think the governor wants his constituents, Nevadans, to think about how much power he has in determining the use of these funds? I th He's been at the front of a lot of press conferences lately touting how the dollars are being spent. I think he wants people to know that this is an unprecedented amount of money and he's taking it very seriously of how we can fix systemic problems using this money. Um, since the launch, even before October, they had a launch event last summer, kind of having an exploration committee and doing like an 80 day statewide tour with the treasurer uh, to s solicit the application. So I think he wants the people to know that, hey, we're taking this money that it's unprecedented and we're trying to fix some of these systemic gaps that we have long seen. I think he's trying to get out in front to be like, hey, I'm actually working and trying hard to fix the lives of and uh, fix the issues most dear to the people of Nevada. The state has until the end of 2024 to allocate these funds. So with the election in November of this year, are voters going to be able to tell how well his decisions or his influence in where this money is going, how well it ended up turning out? That is a good question, and I'm going to be a journalist. It's going to be uncomfortable to say I don't know. Um, I think more journalists should be okay with saying that. Oh, because, I totally am. Because there, it's, there's so many different issues at play in this November election on the national and local scene between inflation, the response to climate change, uh, reproductive rights of women, uh, uh, human rights of LGBTQ community. There's so much at play, let alone just the, the everyday issues of housing is increasing, rent is increasing, cost of foods and services. And so I think the governor's, governor's response will play a role in how voters turn out and who they vote for, especially, and also to what priorities uh, Lombardo puts forward. I think those will play, put, become in play, but I don't know how much that's going to factor in way into the final decision, how people vote. And the Republican response to how the governor is using these funds? What's what it response? Been? <laughs> uh, I know that reporters, including Nevada Current, have asked pri policy priorities for uh, uh, Sheriff Lombardo and how he would respond differently for using these federal dollars and he hasn't actually responded to how he he has criticized about oversight which is of course a, 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 a topic we do need to cover about oversight but he hasn't put forward any pri uh, policy priorities of how he would actually spend these dollars. Michael Lyle with the Nevada Current we look forward to having you on Nevada Week in person on September 3rd thank you so much.